Good morning, everyone. Um, as, as we go on to uh, worship God and honor him, I just want us to start off by looking at Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Um, the disciples were asking the Lord Jesus about prayer. And in Matthew 6, the Lord Jesus had been teaching them how to pray. Amongst other things, he said that when we pray, we shouldn't be like the hypocrites, that it's not about being seen. It's not about being heard. But we must just know that our father is in our presence. And he said, when you pray, go into your most private room, close the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And he says, um, when you pray, pray in this manner. He says, our father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Before this time, you know, Many of them did not see God as their father. They saw him as a scary being, as a being that was, you know, just a judge. They saw him as just the just judge of the universe who is waiting to give you punishment, who is waiting to visit you with punishment. But God is our father. He is very much interested in our affairs. It's not just the big things he's interested in. He even is interested in what you're going to wear to church today. He's interested. Well, what are you going to wear? Which dress are you going to wear? If you ask him, he will have an opinion about it. He's your father. He's interested in everything. What are you going to do today? He's interested. So this morning, I just want us to come to him as our father who is in heaven, understanding that he loves us. He's interested in us. We are not orphans. You know, when you have a good father, you don't have to carry every burden on your own. Every child who knows that their father loves them, knows that their father will tolerate them, their father will help them, their father will receive them, even as our earthly fathers. You know, before my father passed away, you know, we had a good relationship. I know that he loves me. When I was doing my teacher training, I used to go back home almost every night when we first started. And my dad wouldn't be like, why are you wasting transport money because I'd spent quite a bit to go home. When I'd get home, you know, my mom was not at home. Most times should be at work. And then my dad would be like, what have you come for? Queen B. I'll be like, dad, I don't like the food on campus. It tastes horrible. He says, okay, my daughter, just stay here, eat your food. And then we'll go back to school later, you know, because he just loved me. And that's, imagine if our earthly fathers, they love us. What about our heavenly one? So I just want us to worship him this morning and come to him as his children. He is our good, good father. He loves us. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name this morning. Father, I'm coming to you this morning as your child. I'm not praying to an evil God. I'm praying to a good, good father. I've come into my closet this morning to speak to my good, good father. I've come to the one who loves me, the one who cares for me, the one who's interested in me, the one who's interested in my affairs. Thank you, Lord. Father, we honor you for you're a good, good father. You love us, oh God. Only you have the right answer for us this morning as we come to the altar of prayer because you know what we need just even before we ask it, oh Father. Father, you know our deepest desires. You know where we are right now. You know the self, the help that we need. You know the strength that we need. You know where the enemy has been coming against us. Father, you know it all this morning. We just thank you, the good, good Father. You are perfect in all your ways. We thank you this morning, good, good Father. You give us peace that is unexplainable peace that is unexplainable that is beyond understanding we give you thanks this morning good good father we thank you you are calling us into deeper love deeper 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 love you love us oh god we are grateful this morning father you love us father you care for us father we are just grateful this morning that we have not been offended we have a father an everlasting father a father who doesn't diminish a father who doesn't come to an end a father who's good doesn't change. A father who can never stop being a father. Father, you can't help yourself. You love us. You're never going to leave us. You're never going to forsake us. You are just a good father. You're just a loving father. Oh, we worship you. We bless your name this morning. We adore you this morning. We reverence your name this morning. Oh, Lord, we thank you this 
this morning as we reflect on how much you love us, how much you care for us, all the things that you have done for us, all the favor that you have shown us, all the goodness you have shown us, the kindness you have shown us. Father, you have done it all for us. We are so grateful, Father. We are so grateful, Lord. You've done it, Lord, again this morning. We look at ourselves and we see the testimony of your goodness. What a faithful Father you are. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. You know, in Genesis, Father God wanted to show us again his fatherhood and who he is through Father Abraham. He called Father Abraham, Abraham, father of many nations. And he wanted us to see a part of himself through Father Abraham. God is the father of many nations. God is not racist. He's not tribalist. He's not discriminatory. He loves each and every one of us, wherever we come from, whatever is our cultural background, God loves us. It's not a problem for him. He's the father of many nations. I just want you to thank him once again and say, Father, I thank you that Lord, you are the father of many nations. Every, every nation represented on this prayer altar. Father, you love all of us. You love us. You don't have any favorite children. You love us, oh God. When I pray in my language, you love me. When I sing in other people's languages, you love me. When I even worship with a song that I don't understand the meanings, you understand the meaning, oh God, and you love me and you receive my worship. When Lord, I hear somebody speaking in their language and I don't even get it, but oh God, it's a prayer. And I say, amen. You answer that prayer even when I don't get it because you are the father of many nations. You have not left any tribe out. You've not left any nationality out. You love all of us. Oh God, no matter where we come from, no matter what is going on in our nations, oh God, you are a good, good father and you love us. We thank you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. When we go to um, Genesis, Genesis 22, when we go to Genesis 22 and we see the account there of God and Father Abraham, the Bible says Father Abraham was asked to, um, to give God as a sacrifice. The only son that he had, the son that he loved, the one he waited for until he was 99. God said, come and give him as a, as a sacrifice. And we know that God wasn't interested in human sacrifice, but he was trying to teach us something about his only begotten son, Jesus, that he sent to die for us. Because when Father Abraham gets on, you know, Mount Moriah, the Lord stops him from actually killing Isaac. But before then, when Isaac had been asking the father and saying, Father, look, we've got the fire, we've got the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And we know that Jesus is our burnt offering. What is a burnt offering? The burnt offering would take on all the punishment of the sin of the nation, would take on all the shame, all the reproach, all the embarrassment, everything. That's why it was a burnt offering to be burnt, burnt, burnt to ashes, you know, to destroy, to, to, to pour out the full fire of judgment. Isaac said, where is the burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, in, in, you can find that in Genesis 22 verse 8. Genesis 22 verse 8. He said, my son, God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering. God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering. And when they actually got to the altar of sacrifice, we know it's not a lamb that they saw. When the angel stops Abraham from uh, killing Isaac and Abraham looked up, Genesis twenty two thirteen. Abraham looked up and behold, there was a ram caught in the thicket of the horns. A ram is not a lamb. Abraham has already said God will provide himself a lamb. But they sacrificed a ram, meaning that the true sacrifice hadn't come in the days of Father Abraham. The true sacrifice came through Jesus, the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. Why did Father God allow Jesus to come? Because he's a good, good father. He's a father of many nations and he wanted all our nations to be saved and delivered. I just want us to thank him again and say, Father, I thank you. Thank you, good, good father, for you already had a plan to deliver me from my problems, from my failures by sending me the Lord Jesus Christ. You already had a plan even ever before I was 
born. Father, even before the foundations of the earth, you already had a plan to send the Lamb of God to die in my place, to be the burnt offering, to carry the fire of judgment upon himself. I thank you that Jesus has carried the fire of judgment. I thank you, Lord Almighty, that you've provided this day. You've provided the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's why Abraham called the name of that place Yahweh Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, as it is to this day. Upon the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Genesis 22 14. This morning, I want us to worship him, Jehovah Jireh. On his mountain this morning, it shall be seen. Are you on his mountain, child of God, this morning? If you're on his mountain, it shall be seen. What shall it be seen? The power of his glory, the power of his name, the power of his mercy, the power and the efficacy of the Lamb of God who died in our place. It shall be seen upon the mountain of God. This morning, we are not praying from anywhere else. We are praying from the mountain of God. And on this mountain of God, it shall be seen. The provision of God shall be seen. The blood of Jesus washes us from sin. The lamb has been provided. He's the biggest gift that we have. That's why the Bible says that if God did not spare his son, and gave us his son. How much more will he freely give us all things that we are asking for? Whatever you are asking for is smaller than Jesus this morning. Whatever you need from him is smaller than Jesus. Jesus is the biggest gift. We worship you, Jehovah Jireh. Ah, I will never be more loved than I am right now. God loves me. He loves me. Oh, he loves me. I will never be more loved than I am right now. God loves me. He loves me. He loves me. And because he loves me, I look up to him this morning. Thank you, Father. Father, thank you, good, good Father. Thank you, the great provider, Jehovah Jireh, Yahweh Jireh. We are standing on the mountain of God's holiness, the mountain of God's holy presence, the headquarters of the universe. We are standing on Mount Zion, on the mountain top. We don't want to forget how we feel right now as we are convinced beyond any reasonable doubt that Jireh, you are the great provider. You are our Father. We are convinced, oh God, we are convinced that you are here with us, working in our midst, doing what no man can do. The way maker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness. You are with us, Jaira. We worship you. We honor you. You love us. We are loved. We are the beloved of God. We will never be more loved than we are right now. And because you love us, oh, we are expectant. We are expectant that we will see the goodness of Father in the land of the living. Thank you, almighty God. Hallelujah. We are loved by Jaira. We are loved by Jaira. Jaira loves us. Jaira loves us. If he, if he clothes the lilies with beauty and splendor, How much more will he clothe us? How much more? If he watches over every sparrow, how much more does he love us? If none of our hairs can fall to the ground without God knowing it. uh, What about the big things happening to you? God knows already. If he knew when your strand of hair fell, that you didn't even notice when the strand of hair fell. He loves us. He says, even the hair on our head is, is numbered. He knows number 10. He knows number 50. God knows how many strands of hair have fallen off my head since the day I was born. Yet he has kept track of them and continued to number them. Thank you, Father. We bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go back to that Genesis 22, verse 14. I'll read for us in the King James and the Amplified Version. In the King James, it says, And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Brethren, if you can hear me, I just want you to repeat it to yourself. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Because you are standing on the mountain of God, it shall be seen. They will look at you and they will see the manifestation of God's glory, power, power, testimony. In the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. There will be evidential evidence. There will be evidential testimony. On the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Because we are standing on Mount Zion, it shall be seen. In the Amplified Bible, in the Amplified Bible, so Abraham named that place 
the Lord will provide. And you know, in the Bible, in my paper copy Bible, it's all capitalized. The phrase, the Lord will provide capital letters. Because when we see Lord capitalized, it means Yahweh, the self-existent God whom nobody created. Yahweh, self-existent God whom nobody created in capital letters will provide. And it is said to this day, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be seen and provided. I want you to repeat it to yourself this morning and say the Lord Yahweh will provide on the mountain of the Lord. It will be seen and provided. It will be seen. You are going to see it with your two eyes. You are going to see what God is doing. It will be seen and provided. You are going to see and there'll be provision on the mountain of Yahweh. It will be seen. It will be provided. I say it again. The Lord Yahweh will provide on his mountain. It will be seen and it will be provided. I want you to keep declaring it to yourself this morning. Oh, believe it, child of God, on the mountain of the Lord. It shall be seen and it shall be provided. It shall be seen upon this mountain where I'm standing, representing my family, representing my bloodlands, representing everyone around me by the blood of the everlasting covenant, by the blood of Jesus, it shall be seen. And it shall be provided in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I want us to join Genesis 22 again with Romans 8, 31 and 32. Bible says, I'm reading Amplified Bible. What then shall we say to all these things? All these things, all these things, all the prayer requests you have, you have brought this week as we've been praying and fasting, all the challenges you're looking at. What shall we say to these things? We are telling those things. If God is for us, who can be successful against us? That's what the Amplified says. Who can be successful? Even disease, you cannot be successful against us. Verse 32. He who did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? I've already explained to us that Abraham is a type of God. He's given us an idea about God. That's why God called him Abraham, father of many nations. All the nations represented on this prayer line this morning. God is your father and he did not spare Jesus for us. If he gave us the most valuable treasure in heaven. How will he not also along with Jesus graciously give us all things? I want you to come with confidence and say, Father, I thank you this morning. For you have already given the lamb that was slain. I am confident this morning that every single thing on my prayer list, you have graciously given me. You have graciously given me every single item on my prayer list. Even the ones I've been afraid to write down, but are written on the tablets of my heart. Lord, the ones I've written in my heart, I've not even written on paper. Lord Jehovah God, I thank you that you are going to graciously give me all things. Every prayer point, Lord, we are going to raise this morning on this prayer altar. Thank you that you are here to give us the answers. You are graciously giving us the answers. Every prayer altar. Though that's all God has been raised on this prayer line. Wherever my brothers and sisters in Christ are praying from, wherever they've come on this line, oh God, and they are praying from, thank you this morning that you will graciously grant us the answers to our prayers in the name of Jesus. We are confident this morning. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now that we are here in the presence of our father who loves us and we are convinced he loves us, I just want us to take a few prayer points. The first one I want us to take is concerning patterns and cycles. Where there are patterns and cycles that we see in our families and we don't like and we are not happy with them, you know. I want us to pray right now in the presence of Jireh, who's going to freely give us all things, that those patterns be broken. I want to give us an example. So in the Bible, we know about Abraham. We know some of Abraham's failures, that once upon a time where Abraham lived, there was a famine. And when there was a famine, he went down to Egypt. Mark the, 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 the word down. 
He went down. Going down to Egypt means that you actually descended lower than what God would have expected you. He went down to Egypt. He went down. Egypt is a symbol of sin, is a symbol of the world. He went down to Egypt to get help. And he even told lies about his wife. And then he never had a child until he was old. And then come his son, Isaac. Isaac also had a famine and he tried to go to Egypt, but the Lord intervened for him. But you know what? His wife was barren for 20 years and he too lied about his wife. A strange king from a strange land, Isaac lied about his wife, who had surrendered up his wife to become the concubine of, of, of somebody else, just like his father Abraham had done. When his father Abraham was doing it, Isaac was not there. He didn't know about that. So we can't say he learned it from his father. How did he learn all these things? But why did he also get a famine just like his father? And why was his own wife's childbirth delayed? The wife came and stayed in the tent of his mother and then got the same problem his mother had. Going on to Jacob. Jacob, he also, his wife, the wife he loved, Rachel, was barren for many years, many, many years. And she actually died giving birth because something in her life is rejecting her giving birth. He ends up in Egypt as well. He also suffered famine. But when you look at Jacob, his own famine came in old age. When it was Abraham's, the famine came earlier on in his life. When it was Isaac, the famine came on earlier in his life. When it was Jacob, the famine came later on in his life. Yesterday, the Lord was ministering to me about this, that sometimes we think there's no evil pattern in our family concerning something because actually the devil has reversed the order. So whereas your father's famine came early, you think you've escaped the famine because it's not yet come. But if you don't pray, it will come tomorrow. God forbid that for us. Jacob thought he has escaped the pattern of famines. But you know what? When he was now old, it came and he had to go to Egypt and live in Egypt in the days of his son, Joseph. So the pattern was completed. The cycle was completed. I want you to pray this morning that any strange evil cycle, you know, personally, I'm privileged that I know my mom, I know my grandma, and I know my great grandma. I know them. I don't know everything about them, but there are some things where I see they suffered unnecessarily and I see the cycle. I like, God, I don't want to go through what these women went through. Bless them for trying, but I don't want to be there. I don't want this cycle. I want you to look at your family. Even if you don't know your progenitors, begin to ask God, Father, is there anything I'm passing through right now? That is really a cycle. My mother went through it. My dad cheated on my mother. My grandfather cheated on my grandmother. Lord, is this a cycle that, oh God, has actually gone on in a long time? Father, in the name of Jesus, on this mountain of God, because you are my father, I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus on every cycle of faith failure, cycle of frustration, cycle of shame, cycle of misery, cycle of sorrow. I plead the blood of Jesus. Father, whatever taskmaster has been assigned to me and my family, whatever evil taskmaster has been assigned to us uh, to cause us to remain in this slavery. Father, we reject their rulership this morning. I reject the rulership of the taskmaster. I reject his, I reject his, his, his yoke. I reject the, the yoke of the taskmaster. I refuse it, Father Lord. My mother went through it. My grandma went through it. I refuse to go through it. In the name of Jesus, where I've been going through it, I say enough is enough. I refuse it, oh God. It cannot continue. My daughters will not see it. My sons will not see it. I reject it, mighty God. Evil cycles, oh God, waiting for me in my tomorrow. Let those cycles be broken. Evil cycles are waiting for my children in their tomorrow. Evil cycle be broken in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Whatever the evil taskmaster is saying my family owes them. Whatever they are saying we are debtors. Oh Lord Jehovah God I answer that debt by the blood of Jesus. That altar that is crying for me to suffer the way my mother suffered. Suffer the way my grandma suffered. Suffer the way my great grandma suffered. Oh I feed you with the blood of Jesus. 
Jesus. Where you are calling for my sweat. You are calling for my labor. You are calling for my strength. I, I answer you with the blood of Jesus. You will not get anything more out of me. In the mighty name of Jesus. I reject that slave master. I reject that evil pattern. I reject it. Where that cycle troubled my father. It troubled my grandfather. It troubled my great grandfather. I reject you. I renounce you. You are not permitted in my life. You will not trouble me. The troublers of my mother and father will not trouble me. The troublers of my great grandma, my great grandfather will not trouble me. The troublers of my ancestors, of my progenitors, you will not trouble me. I reject your rulership. I answer you by the blood of the everlasting covenant. Jesus is the Lamb of God. He has taken away the sins of the world. Whatever you are saying is your legal ground for enforcing evil cycle. I renounce it now. I denounce it now. I separate myself now. I remove my DNA from your database. I remove the DNA of my children from your database. Every evil database carrying evil information about us to repeat evil cycles in our lives. We locate you by the finger of God. We command you to catch fire. Holy Ghost fire. Destroy the evil database. Destroy the evidences of the enemy. Destroy by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. We refuse the taskmaster. We refuse them. It's not our portion. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, collectively, we join our faith on this prayer line and we break the cycles of wickedness from our past, present, and future. Let them be broken in the name of Jesus. We break them. Let's go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. Bible says, the Egyptians said about the children of God, Come, let us deal shrewdly with them so that they will not multiply. And in the event of war, they will not join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. They don't want you to escape from the land of pain, the land of sorrow, the land of futility, the land of shame, land of disgrace, land of misery, land of barrenness, land of poverty, land of lack or whatever. You know, in the realm of the spirit, they have different lands where they capture people, put them there. You know how like in Africa, we used to have the slave trade and they capture people, take them to the Caribbean to work on the plantations. In the realm of the spirit, they also have Satan and his, and his agents also have spiritual lands where they carry a child of God. Yes, you are born again. Yes, you are going to heaven, but you're in the land where there's no water. You are in the land that is dry and barren. God forbid that for us. Uh, this Bible says, you know, they did not want them to escape from the land. I want you to pray this morning. Say every strange realm that Satan and his agents are trying to keep me in. I break out of it this morning. I reject it. I renounce it. My citizenship is only on Mount Zion. I refuse for any part of my life to be lived out of a dry and barren land, a land of futility, a, a land of sorrow, a land of misery, a land of working for nothing, a land of frustration, a land of anxiety, a land of poverty. I reject it, Father. I reject it for my head. I reject it for my husband. I reject it for my children. I reject it for my brothers and sisters, my parents, my grandparents. I reject it for my children's children. I reject it, oh God, for everybody connected to me in the church of God. Everyone in the body of Christ, we are all connected. I reject evil lands for you. Every realm of wickedness where Satan and his agents have, are, are, are feeding you the bread of affliction. We come out of it. We reject it. We reject the oppression. We come out of that evil land. We will not go down to Egypt. We go up to Mount Zion. We go up to Mount Zion. We go up to Mount Zion. We will not go down uh, in the realm of the spirit, uh, any strange realm uh, where we are being held as prisoners. Uh, we come out of it in the name of Jesus. Oh, I come out of the dry and barren land. I come out of every misery. I come out of it uh, in the name of Jesus. It's not my portion. It's not the portion of my family. It's not the portion of my brothers and sisters in Christ in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In verse 11 of Exodus 1, it says, So they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with hard labor. They set taskmasters to oppress them with hard labor. And you know, these taskmasters, when the children of God started asking, let us go to be free. The Bible says the taskmasters increased their burdens. They said, okay. 
You people want to be free. No, we are actually going to multiply the burden. They increase the burden so that these people will be too busy to even pray. They'll be too busy to even imagine what a future without slavery is like. They were trying to keep them busy. I want you to pray two things. Lord, any taskmaster. That has been assigned over me from the realms of the spirit. Any demonic taskmaster, any earthly taskmaster. Some of them are in our jobs, in our offices. Anytime your caseload goes down, they add another one. Anytime, you know, this week, as we are in our middle of prayer and fasting, after my students had an exam on Thursday, I'm supposed to have an easier time. Next thing, Tim's call is coming. Oh, patience. Oh, we need you to do this A, B, C, and D. I said, look at this one, taskmasters. Adding on, adding on work. We're going to pray where we have spiritual taskmasters and earthly taskmasters. This morning, we re- announce to them, we are not interested. We reject the task. And by the power in the finger of God, we sack them. We bind them. We arrest them. We send them to where the Lord Jesus sends demons, where the Lord Jesus sends evil powers. We refuse to respond to any taskmaster in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, this morning we rebel against the taskmasters. Every demonic taskmaster that has been assigned over us, Lord, we reject the evil tasks. Whatever wants us to work so hard that we can't even pray. We can't study the word. We can't do your work. We can't serve you in the church of God. We are busy up and down doing things that don't help. Doing things Things that have no eternal value. Being busy up and down. Instead of being busy for the Lord. Father, we reject evil tasks in the mighty name of Jesus. Every task that is taking away, taking you away from the presence of God. Begin to reject it because ultimately that thing will destroy you. Anything taking you away from the presence of God. That you can't serve God anymore because you are busy with this thing. Father, Lord, we reject the evil task. You're going to pray. Tasks can be a distraction. Any problem in your life that has become a distraction this morning that you can't concentrate on God, what God called you to do because you are chasing after the problem. Father, we reject that in the name of Jesus. We reject that. Nothing will take us away from the love of God. Nothing will take us away from the things of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I refuse to be sidelined. I refuse to be distracted. I refuse to be distracted. Often the distraction is not the real problem. The real problem is hiding somewhere, waiting to manifest. It shall not be our portion in the name of Jesus. We know, Lord, that Satan is trying to put up smoke screens. He's trying to distract us with these petty, petty things. We refuse to be distracted. We refuse to be sidelined. In the name of Jesus, we rise up and we come against the taskmaster. We bind them with the chains of Holy Ghost fire and we ask the Lord Jesus to cage them wherever he wants to send them to. In the name of Jesus, let the true Lord Jesus take them to the prison prepared for them. Every demon on assignment against us over our families as a taskmaster, we are arrest you and send you to where the true Lord Jesus keeps you. Father, all our earthly taskmasters, we pray they will lose that assignment that wants them to oppress us in the name of Jesus. Let them lose that assignment from the devil. Let them receive assignments from you. They will begin to treat us well. They will treat us well in the name of Jesus. They will look after us. They'll be the ones to defend us and say, don't give this one anymore. They already have enough in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. We will not be oppressed with hard labor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we refuse to be oppressed with hard labor. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus, from today, Lord, we declare ourselves free indeed. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We declare ourselves free from satanic oppression, from satanic labor, from satanic tasks. In the name of Jesus, we are not his instruments of of being used. Lord, we reject it. In the mighty name of Jesus, Oria Kasevregadula Masan. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, we can't finish off the prayer points I planned. Maybe we will do it again in the evening. I just want us to end with this. Isaiah 60, um, 65. Isaiah 65. I want us to use this as our confession. Isaiah 65, um, we're going to start from verse 20. Verse 20, you're going to declare over your family, over your bloodline, that there will no longer be an infant who lives only a few days. In other words, none of our babies will die. None of our young children will die. It says there will not be an old man who doesn't finish his days. So, 
The old man who dies at 65 has not finished his days. He needs to finish them. He needs to reach 90. You know, there will not be an old man who doesn't finish his days. The youth who dies at the age of a hundred, that's what we want. And the one who does not reach the age of a hundred will be thought of as accursed. So in other words, because we are blessed, our children will live to hundred. That's what he's saying. He's saying you will build houses and live in them. You will plant vineyards and eat the fruit. In other words, you are eating the fruit of your labor. He says they will not build and another occupy. They will not plant and another eat the fruit. For as the lifetime of a tree, so will be the days of my people. And my chosen people will fully enjoy and long make use of the work of their hands. You will make use of the work of your hands. You will not just be working and can't see what is coming out of the work. Let's declare that. Use it as your declaration. Isaiah 65 from verse 20. Begin to speak it over yourself and your whole family as we round up this morning. In the name of Jesus. Father Lord, I speak over myself, my husband, my children, over my family, over my parents, my brothers and sisters. Lord, I speak over everyone connected to me, oh God. I decree and declare that in our household, in the church of God, on this prayer line, there will not be an infant who only lives a few days. None of our children will die in, in, in infancy. None of them will die as babies. None of them will die young. And there will not be any old woman or old man who doesn't finish their days. They will fulfill the number of their days in the name of Jesus. We will not have any youth dying before the age of 100 years. In the name of Jesus. Father Lord, none of us will be accursed. None of our youth will be accursed, but we declare them blessed in the name of Jesus. We will build houses and live in them. We will not build for another to live in our houses. We will not buy houses for somebody else to live in them. We will plant and eat the fruit of what we have planted. Every good seed physical seed, spiritual seed, every good seed that we've planted. Father, we call forth our harvest. Lord, oh Lord, the seed of prayer, we are receiving a harvest. The seed of service in your vineyard, we are receiving a harvest. The good seeds, Lord, good seeds we've planted in other people's lives. We receive a harvest. In the name of Jesus, we will eat the fruit of our labor. We will not build and another occupy. We will not plant and another eat. Father God, Ah, we are blessed. We are your chosen people. We will long make use of the work of our hands. For a long time, we will continue to enjoy the fruit of our labor. We will not be trapped in futility. We will not be trapped in misery. We will not be trapped, oh God, in circles of uh, going, going round in circles and no progress. In the name of Jesus, from today, we decree and declare spiritual progress, physical progress, professional progress, business progress, ministerial progress, progress in every dimension in the mighty name of Jesus we will never labor in vain it says in Isaiah 65 23 you will not labor in vain you will not bear children for disaster for they are the descendants of those blessed by the Lord and their offspring with them our children are the descendants of people who have been blessed by the Lord you and I are blessed of the Lord so our children are descendants of the blessed their children's children are descendants of the blessed we will never labor in vain even over our children our children are not here for disaster or to bring us sorrow but children are in heritage of the Lord the fruit of the womb is his reward this reward God has given us will not turn into another thing. The reward God gave us will always continually be a blessing to us. These children will always be a blessing. They will not be a source of misery, a source of sorrow, a source of confusion. In the name of Jesus, we reject it. We say they will always be a source of blessing. In the precious name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.